Lee, I guess the big picture question first up, is this as good as it gets? Yeah, this is going to be the peak uh, quarter for the cycle, given what we were up against uh, last year for Q2 was pretty dismal, right, right in the, the beginning of the pandemic. Um, so comps are going to be very easy and it's going to get a little harder from here, but we're still going to have another couple of quarters before we come around the turn next year. Uh, when it's going to get real tough. And, you know, from our perspective, if you think about it just in the most simple way, investors don't want to be heavily invested uh, in specific names or in the market overall coming into quarters where you're going to have incredibly tough comps. But it's going to be pretty easy, you know, still for the next couple. Lee, I mean, we have an executive order out today trying to increase scrutiny on technology M&A. And frankly, this is a bipartisan issue. How much of a headwind is some of the anti-big tech sentiment on some of these stocks? You know, it, it's it, for this has been a running kind of theme for the last, what, four or five, mm -hmm. six years. And I just at every single turn, I've, you know, said it's just not an issue and it hasn't been. And I just don't I continue to believe that it won't be. It would take a very serious bipartisan desire to look at the actual problems here. And, there, and that just isn't there. And there's only so much that, uh, you know, this administration can do on its own without real legislation. And I've, I've said over and over again that if if the legislature really wants to do something, it's not about breaking up big tech. It's about taking away what allows them to continue to add on to themselves. And in the social yep. media sphere, that is very specifically the fact that their APIs for the social graph are not open, right? You don't need to go on this long road. All you need to do is write a law that says that these companies have to open their social graph and that'll do it. You don't, you don't have to deal with, you know, having them sell off pieces that will start to disintegrate them. Lee, just talking of, of the big tech companies, what we've been surprised about certainly over the last few weeks is the fact that growth stocks have come roaring back, led by the big tech names. People are looking at their earnings. They see potential safety. They see stability. Is that what we're going to get this time around as well? Yeah, you know, what's really interesting here. The last three months, this is the highest level of upward revisions for the overall S&P 500 uh, names that we've seen in six years. Um, so analysts were way behind the curve here and they are chasing the fundamentals higher, which is why we've seen the market uh, surge pretty well. Um, tech, interestingly, uh, is kind of right in the middle of that group. It's really been energy and materials that have uh, seen the largest upward revisions. Um, but as you pointed out, over the last month and a half, those sectors have lagged. So uh, it looks like the belief from the market is that going forward, uh, you know, they've caught up enough on the earnings and revenue there and that we're going to start to see uh, tech and consumer you know, take back over. Lee, within tech, are you looking at a maybe divergence, a bifurcation between what I keep hearing some analysts saying that there's a really strong advertising environment? So maybe there's a preference towards companies that rely on advertising versus maybe a subscription based model. Are you thinking about the fundamentals and the impact within tech on the difference between tech companies? Yeah, so two ways to think about it. One is just in the middle or, you know, where we are right now, which is kind of at the beginning of a massive bullish economic cycle, uh, advertising is going to be amazing. And so, yes, you want to be exposed to anything uh, remotely uh, like that. And, and those names should outperform. The other way to think about it is, and we've been discussing this for the last, you know, 18 months, is basically what happens to those names that saw a lot of pull forward in demand and adoption because of the pandemic. Do they kind of just fade off? Do those growth rates slow considerably? Those multiples are very high. Or is that is that stuff real and going to stick around? And I think you need to pick and choose very wisely within that group. Something like Peloton maybe yeah. some you know very yeah. different than something like Zoom. Um, and you know I'll let I'll let viewers decide which one's which. But I think, you know, the, there's going to be a big bifurcation in those high multiple tech names that were, you know, very pull forward driven by the uh, by the pandemic. It's amazing. The market's basically given just everybody a free pass up until now. You do wonder, as you say, as the comp starts to get harder, the market starts to change, the economy starts to change, whether we get 
more dispersion in terms of the way that we're getting uh, these companies performing. Just final quick question from me, Lee. One of the critical factors that we'll be watching out for is guidance onto the second half. Industrials in particular have been flagging supply bottlenecks that they continue uh, to suffer from. What is your sense of what the message is going to be? Is it the message going to be it's going to get tougher? What do you think companies are going to be saying? Well, um, some friends of mine uh, in, in the industry, you know, have been telling me that the supply bottlenecks uh, specifically having to do with shipping are not going to be resolved, you know, within the next couple of months, that this is going to be a nine to 12 month story. Now, what that produces is instead of having this massive peak in GDP and earnings, you know, in the next couple of quarters, it, the economic boom is going to be more drawn out, but at a lower kind of, uh, you know, lower level. Um, you know, for the market, this isn't an issue necessarily. Um, and we have seen in the SMI's alpha factor model, specifically the post earnings drift model, the last two quarters have been some of the best quarters we've ever had in our history. And what that basically says is that when those prints happen and companies blow their numbers out of the water or they disappoint big, that PMs are having to rejigger those forward expectations in their books significantly, and they're operating based on that. They're not thinking it's a one-time thing. Um, and yeah. so I, I think yeah. that will continue over the next couple of quarters here as uh, you know, the numbers really matter because they do mean something going forward instead of just being kind of uh, transient.